Today we will be discussing about multilateral export control regimes or nuclear regimes. Multilateral export control regimes are groupings that aims to control the proliferation of weapons of mass destruction namely nuclear weapons, chemical weapons and biological weapons. Multilateral export control regimes are also defined as export control regimes which is states used to organize their national export controls. So what do you think about nuclear weapons? Many scientists and politicians had many many different opinion on nuclear weapons. Robert Oppenheimer often regarded as the father of nuclear weapons has once said that I am death, I am the destroyer of worlds indicating the tremendous destructive potential of nuclear energy as well as nuclear weapons. Then Albert Einstein once said that, I don't know, once a reporter asked Albert Einstein, what will be the weapons of World War III? Albert Einstein replied saying that, I don't know what will be the weapons of World War III, but I can surely say that the weapons of World War IV will be sticks and stones, because by that time humanity will have destroyed the, its entire progress. Likewise, there are many, many different opinions on nuclear weapons. Margaret Thatcher once said that nuclear weapons are a good thing. Nuclear weapons stabilizes the international politics and all. And today, why we don't see big wars is due to nuclear weapons and all. So even though nuclear weapons has often been regarded as a huge threat to the survival of humanity itself, at the same time, nuclear energy has tremendous potential as a cleaner form of energy in a world we are living, which is increasingly being threatened by global warming, greenhouse effect, etc. So multilateral export control regimes. There are mainly four different kinds of multilateral export control regimes and they are Nuclear Suppliers Group or NSG, Missile Technology Control Regime, MTCR and Australia Group and Wassenaar Arrangement. So you have four different multilateral export control regimes, MTCR, NSG, Australia Group and Wassenaar Arrangement. In 2008, India signed the historical nuclear deal with the United States and also in 2008 India got waiver from nuclear suppliers group and after that point India has been consistently seeking membership in these four multilateral export control regimes. And one thing to note about these multilateral export control regimes is that all of these regimes are informal political understandings. They are not bounded by a treaty or there is no legal binding with respect to these multilateral export control regimes. This is one point you should clearly note down as this will be often appearing in the examination question papers and all asking whether MTCR is bound by a treaty or whether it is an informal political understanding and all. And it can even be appear as a statement in a statement type question in the prelims examination. So please be careful here. Please remember that all these multilateral export control regimes are not legally binding, they are an informal political understanding among member countries. So let us start with the missile technology control regime. Missile technology control regime, it focuses on preventing the proliferation of missiles as well as missile technology. Now let us talk about the history of MTCR. MTCR was started in 1987 by the G7 countries. So what are the G7 countries? It is easy to learn the G7 countries. You have two countries from North America namely US and Canada. Then you have four countries from Europe namely UK, France, Germany and Italy. Then you have one country from Asia which is Japan. And in 1992 MTCR focus was expanded. When in 1987 MTCR was formed with these seven countries, MTCR mainly focused on missiles 
capable of delivering nuclear weapons only. But in 1992, MTCR objectives was expanded in including missiles and missile technology capable of delivering the whole weapons of mass destruction, namely nuclear, chemical and biological weapons. Now, let us discuss the members of MTCR. So, just take your material and let us note down what are the most important members of MTCR. MTCR, like we said before, initially started with the seven countries, but now it has 35 member countries and the important members are Brazil, Australia, Canada, Germany, Japan, then you have Luxembourg, New Zealand, Russian Federation, South Africa, Switzerland, Turkey, Ukraine, UK, US, etc. And India is the latest member to join MTCR. India joined MTCR in 2016 June. So that is what makes MTCR really, really important for our this year prelims as well as mains examination. Now what are the objectives of MTCR? Like we said before, MTCR wants to control the proliferation of missiles and missile technology. So all these multilateral export control regimes, they want to cut down the proliferation of weapons of mass destruction. Now how MTCR plans to do this is by controlling the delivery systems used for delivering these weapons of mass destruction. So MTCR aims to control the delivery systems. And in the delivery system itself, MTCR mainly focuses on rockets and unmanned aerial vehicles or drones. So in the delivery systems, MTCR mainly focuses on rockets and drones, which is capable of delivering a minimum payload of 500 kg and minimum range of 300 kilometer. So delivery systems like rockets and drones capable of delivering a minimum payload of 500 kg and minimum range of 300 kilometer. So 500 kilogram and 300 kilometer. In addition to that, MTCR also controls softwares and other equipments and systems which are necessary in developing these kind of delivery systems. Then how does MTCR achieve these objectives? In order to achieve these objectives, MTCR mainly has three major areas. First it does export controls, it will be having a, an export control list which the MTCR member countries are supposed to agree to. Then it will be conducting meetings among, among MTCR members in order to contain the proliferation of missile technology. Then also MTCR will be having dialogue and outreach with other countries or non-partners which are not members of MTCR. Then again I am repeating the most important point. MTCR is an informal political understanding now, until 2016, India was not a member of MTCR and India was basically a victim of MTCR. Since India was not an MTCR member, whenever we tried to import missile technology or any other kind of related military technology, there was widespread sanctions or restrictions on India placed by MTCR and due to this, the military development of India got delayed by around 10 years. But advanced military technology was still flying to Pakistan from China. And in 1998, when India conducted our second nuclear test or what we call Pokhran 2 test, MTCR brought out sanctions against India, barring its members from giving missile technology and other related technology to India. This has downgraded development of even our space technology. For example, in developing, in order to develop the GSLV, we need cryogenic technology, but cryogenic technology is also a major part of developing missiles. 
Russia was ready to give cryogenic technology to India, but it was blocked by MTCR stating that this cryogenic technology might be used by India to develop missiles that are capable of delivering nuclear tech weapons. These MTCR restrictions were often considered as a blessing in disguise by Indian scientists later. As MTCR forced restrictions on India, Indian scientists were forced to go local. Then came the visionary who changed the dynamics of Indian defense research, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. Before APJ Abdul Kalam was at DRDO, the indigenization content in India's military systems was only around 30 percentage. But during Kalam's era, it reached up to 50 percentage. Anyway, this was a huge achievement for India at that time and most of the Indian scientists consider this indigenization of military technology by India as nothing short of a mini freedom struggle. In June 2016, MTCR countries decided to admit India. As we know, MTCR works by the principle of consensus, means a country will be trying to join MTCR, then there will be According to MTCR procedures, there will be a particular time period and within that time period, if any country objects to the membership by that country, then it can raise an objection. Otherwise, that country will automatically become an MTCR member. And under this silent procedure, in June 2016, India officially became MTCR member. As no country opposed India's MTCR bid. In 2015 also, India applied for MTCR, although every other country supported the MTCR bid, the MTCR bid of India in 2015 failed due to opposition from Italy due to the bilateral dispute between India and Italy over the Italian marine issue. Now one thing to note down here is that People's Republic of China is not a member of missile technology control regime, although China states that it has adhered to the 1987 guidelines of MTCR. When China applied to join the MTCR in 2004, MTCR members rejected application of China by citing its proliferation of missile technology records. As some countries believe that China has been instrumental in delivering missile technology to countries like Pakistan and North Korea. That's all about missile technology control regime. So here the important points to note down is that MTCR focuses on delivery systems, delivering weapons of mass destruction, mainly rockets and drones which are capable of delivering a payload of minimum 500 kg and range of minimum 300 km. Then India was a victim of MTCR for decades. MTCR put many restrictions on India, but by June 2016, India became a member of MTCR. And India is now the 35th and latest member of missile technology control regime. Now let us try to take a look at how will MTCR entry benefit India. So since now India has become a member of one multilateral export control regimes, this can boost our global non-proliferation records and this can get us an entry on other multilateral export control regimes like NST, Australia Group, Wasnar Arrangement, etc. Then admission to the MTCR would open us the way to buy high-end missile technology from countries like US, Russia, etc. And we are jointly developing the cruise missile called BrahMos with Russia. And now we are now that we are members of MTCR, we can increase the range of BrahMos cruise missile as well as we can export BrahMos cruise missile to other countries like Vietnam, and this can make India a significant arms exporter for the first time. Then India has always wanted to buy Predator drones from the US. Predator drones has been the favorite weapon of CAA to eliminate Taliban leaders and other terrorist groups. And if India can get Predator drones, that might really boost our fight against terrorism, extremism and separatism. Now let us talk about our second multilateral export control regime, NST or Nuclear Suppliers Group. Simply speaking, Nuclear Suppliers Group tries to control the proliferation of nuclear technology and other related goods. 
Now, before we discuss about nuclear supplies group, let us try to have an idea about some backstory of nuclear supplies group. In 1960s, India had an ar arrangement with the Canada in order to build a nuclear reactor called a Cyrus in India. So, Canada built a reactor called a Cyrus in India and for the working of this reactor, heavy water was required and heavy water was supplied by the United States. In the 1971 Indo-Pakistani war or the Bangladeshi liberation war, India was easily winning the war and as US was allied with the Pakistan at that time, the US sent a carrier battle group led by the legendary USS Enterprise to the Bay of Bengal to intimidate India. But the Soviet Union decided to enter the war and it sent out a nuclear submarine from Vladivostok to help India and the US carrier battle group went back to the US shores. So this made Indira Gandhi realize the deterrent value of nuclear weapons and after that war Indira Gandhi decided to develop nuclear weapons for India. And as a result in 1974 India conducted our first nuclear test at Pokhran and this operation was often called by the code name Smiling Buddha. This was a very secret operation and it is often said that even the defense minister wasn't aware about the operation and only Indira Gandhi and a few of the leadership from the military and some of the nuclear scientists were aware about the operation. And it was the first nuclear test done by a country outside the P5 countries or the permanent members of United Nations Security Council. Also, it was the first nuclear weapons test by a country which is not recognized as a nuclear weapon state in the non-proliferation treaty. The US and Canada was enraged knowing that the plutonium used in this nuclear weapon test was built by using the Cyrus reactor which has been set up in India by Canada as well as the United States. And in order to prevent further proliferation of nuclear weapons, all the nuclear supplier states, they formed an organization called the Nuclear Suppliers Group. So Nuclear Suppliers Group was an organization or was a regime that was formed after the May 1974 nuclear test of India. It was formed as a response to India's nuclear test in 1974. When discussing with the NSG, the most important thing to note down is about NSG guidelines. NSG guidelines contain a principle called non-proliferation principle in which a nuclear supplier country should only supply nuclear related items or fuel to another country if it is sure that this will not contribute to nuclear weapon proliferation. NSG guidelines are consistent with uh, several nuclear non-proliferation treaties like uh, NPT or the nuclear non-proliferation treaty, African nuclear weapon free zone treaty, Latin American nuclear weapon free zone treaty, Southeast Asian nuclear weapon free zone treaty etc. So it is consistent with uh, several international agreements on nuclear non-proliferation and it contains the nuclear non-proliferation principle. Now due to the 1974 nuclear weapon test of India and the 1998 nuclear weapon test, NST has blocked nuclear exports to India. But in 2008, India was given a waiver from these restrictions by the nuclear suppliers group. India has always been a champion of nuclear non-proliferation. It was our first Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru who actually got the idea of nuclear non-proliferation to the attention of the international community as the Indian foreign policy has always been focused on the ideals of international peace and resolving bilateral disputes in a peaceful manner. In 2016, India decided to apply for NSC membership and India's NSC membership was considered at the 2016 June plenary of NSG which was conducted at Seoul in South Korea. Although United States and most other countries like around 40 countries supported India's NSG bid, but certain countries like China, 
Brazil, etc. opposed India's NSG bid. Some of these countries like Ireland and South Africa believed that as India is not a non-proliferation treaty signed country, India should not be a member of NSG. Whereas some countries argued that there should be a separate principle for admitting countries which have not signed the NPT to NSG. China and its allies like Brazil argued that India entering the nuclear supplies group might offset the strategic balance in South Asia. Former US Secretary of State John Kerry has wrote an open letter to all of the NSG member states and requested them to accept India's NSG bid or to not block India's NSG bid. Anyway, when it heard that India has applied to join NSG, Pakistan has also applied to join NSG. Pakistan has always had a tendency of following India. When India developed nuclear weapons, the immediate response of Pakistan's Prime Minister Zulfikar Ali Bhutto at that time was, if India develops nuclear weapons, nuclear weapon, we will eat grass, we will starve, but we will also develop a nuclear weapon. That was the response of the Pakistani establishment. And Pakistan has often tried to copy whatever India is trying to do. Anyway, Pakistan also applied for NSG in order to block the NSG bid. Most of the countries were not accommodative of Pakistan's bid, knowing its nuclear proliferation record. The founder of Pakistan's nuclear program, A.Q. Khan, ran an illicit nuclear weapon trade business where it has been believed that, widely believed that countries like Iran, North Korea, etc. got nuclear weapon technology from the A.Q. Khan network. In addition to India and Pakistan, Namibia also requested to be a part of nuclear suppliers group in 2016. Namibia is a major supplier of nuclear fuel and also it has signed the non-proliferation treaty. Now let us talk about the role of China in India's NSG bid. What is the Chinese angle on India's NSG bid? China is one country that op completely opposed India's NSG bid and for this China had many reasons. One of the major reason behind China's blocking of India's NSG bid was that it states that India's NSG bid, if India becomes a member of nuclear supplies group, it might be a huge threat to Pakistan and this might destabilize the South Asian security as this will lead to an arms race between India and Pakistan. Then the Chinese diplomats simply argued that India hasn't signed non-proliferation treaty and Pakistan has also not signed the non-proliferation treaty. Then if India can be a member of nuclear suppliers group, then why can't Pakistan be a member of nuclear suppliers group? But obviously this is completely wrong. India has a non-proliferation record whereas Pakistan has a history of proliferating nuclear technology to rogue states like North Korea and Iran. Then another thing that threatens the Chinese leadership often is the Asia Pivot strategy launched by the Obama administration and Chinese believe that uh, the US supporting India's NSG bid is an attempt to rope India into the Asia Pivot strategy by Washington and they believe that this can be disastrous for the Chinese national interest. Finally, what happened in India's NSC bid was that India's NSC bid failed. China continued its opposition to India's NSC bid. And another country that opposed India's NSC bid consistently was Turkey. Turkey was afraid that if India, a non-NPT signatory, got admitted to the nuclear suppliers group, this can lead to admission for other non-NPT signatories like Israel. And some countries like Switzerland and Brazil proposed for a separate process in order to admit non-NPT countries to NSG. At the same time, some of the nuclear science experts and diplomats have argued that NSG bid is not essential to India as in 2008 India got 
waiver from NST and India has already signed a nuclear deal with several supplier states like Canada, US, France, Kazakhstan, etc. And they say that the real issue behind the failure of nuclear reactors in India are things like huge pricing for nuclear electricity, then the nuclear liability issue, then another big issue is Japan's lack of interest in nuclear energy and nuclear reactors. Most of the major nuclear technology companies like General Electricals, Westinghouse, etc., they are basically Japan-based companies and now they are not uh, much interested in building nuclear reactors at other countries and all. And this is also another reason for the setback of nuclear technology growth in India. But at the same time, NSG membership matters to India because it shows our nuclear technology aspirations as an assertion of right. And when we got the NSG waiver in 2008, we agreed to follow the rules of NSG. But if we get into NSG, we can be a part of that rule making process itself. And also, if we can get into NSG, we can expose the nuclear proliferation track record of Pakistan as well as we can veto any future Pakistani entry to the nuclear suppliers group. So far we discussed about two multilateral export control regimes, NSG and MTCR and now let us talk about Australia group. During the 1980 to 88 period you had the Iran-Iraq war and in 1984 Iraq under the leadership of Saddam Hussein used chemical weapons against Iran. And this was the reason why in 1985 Australia group, a multilateral export control regime aimed at controlling the proliferation of chemical and biological weapons came into being. All of the Australia group members are also partners in both the chemical weapons convention as well as the biological weapons convention. Now again another thing to note down is that Australia group is also not legally binding, it's an informal political understanding among the members. Now let us take a look at the members of Australia group. You have 41 states participating in the Australia group. The European Commission is also participating. Then several countries including Russia, India and China have national export control regimes for some of the Australia group control items. And one important thing to note down about the Australia group is that there is no member from Africa within the Australia group. Then the fourth multilateral export control regime is the Wassenaar arrangement. Wassenaar arrangement was formed in 1996 at Wassenaar in Netherlands and it aims to control the proliferation of conventional arms and dual use goods. And nowadays it has been expanded to include certain items used in cyber security activities as well. The highest decision making body of Wassenaar arrangement is the Wassenaar arrangement plenary and Wassenaar arrangement has also established a secretariat in Vienna which is the capital of Austria. So Wassenaar arrangement secretariat is located in Vienna. Now one thing to note down is that the International Atomic Energy Agency headquarters is also located at Vienna. So Vienna is very important. Now let us take a look at the important members of Wassenaar arrangement. So again you have 41 participating states. You have countries like Australia, Austria, Belgium, then Germany, Greece, Hungary, Italy, Japan, Latvia, Republic of Korea, Switzerland, UK, US, etc. So mostly European members and a few members from Asia like Republic of Korea, Japan, etc. Then when we discuss about nuclear non-proliferation, another organization that which often comes to our memory is the IAEA or International Atomic Energy Agency. IAEA is also known as Atoms for Peace Organization and it is a specialized agency of the United Nations. It was established in 1957 
in order to promote the peaceful use of nuclear energy as well as in order to prevent the proliferation of nuclear weapons. In 2005, IAEA and its former Director General Mohammed El Baradei won the Nobel Prize for Peace. The current Director General of IAEA is Yukia Amano, a famous Japanese diplomat. Then IAEA headquarters is located in Vienna also. Now let us try to solve a previous year prelims question on the multilateral export control regimes topic. So this was a question in 2011. The question was, recently US decided to support India's membership in multilateral export control regimes called the Australia Group and Vasanar Arrangement. What is the difference between them? So this was our question. What is the difference between Australia Group and Vasanar Arrangement? You had two options. You had two statements. Australia Group is an informal arrangement which aims to minimize the risk of assisting chemical and biological weapons proliferation. Whereas Vasanar Arrangement is a formal group under the OECD holding identical objectives. Now this statement is wrong due to two reasons. Vasanar arrangement is not a group which has a similar objective when compared to Australia group and also Vasanar arrangement is not at all associated with the OECD or the Organization for Op Economic Cooperation and Development. So that statement is wrong. Now the second statement is Australia group comprises predominantly of Asian, African and North American countries whereas members of Vasanar arrangement are predominantly from the European Union and American continents. Now this statement might really confuse you. You might think that you need to learn all the members from Australia group, Vasanar arrangement and all and you have around 41 members in each of these regimes. So it is really difficult. But what we can do is that we can use a trick here. There is no African countries in Australia group. So we can find out that this statement is also wrong. So our correct answer is option D, neither one nor two. That's all about multilateral export control regimes.